there are 15 interview questions that account for over 90% of questions you could get asked in a consulting interview. If you hate spending hundreds of hours preparing for consulting interviews, preparing answers or strategies for these 15 questions will get you 90% of the way there. These are 15 questions that nearly every consulting firm asks, including firms such as McKinsey, BCG, Bain, Deloitte, and Accenture. It is critical to prepare answers to each of these interview questions to give yourself an edge over the thousands of other candidates competing for your spot. I'm a former Bain manager and interviewer, and I'm going to walk you through what these 15 consulting interview questions are and exactly how to answer each. By the end of this video, you'll be prepared for over 90% of the questions you could get asked in a consulting interview. Question number one, walk me through your resume. This consulting interview question is typically asked in the beginning of the interview. So it is important to answer this question well in order to leave a great first impression. In asking this question, interviewers are looking to learn two things. One, interviewers want to get an overview of your work experience and achievements. Many times, interviewers don't have the time to look at your resume beforehand. Two, interviewers want to understand why you would be a good fit for consulting, your accomplishments in previous work experiences, and the skills you have developed from these experiences are a good indicator. When you answer this question, follow this strategy. Start with a strong opening statement that summarizes your areas of expertise and number of years of experience. Highlight your most relevant and impressive experiences and accomplishments, starting with the most recent. And finally, connect your experiences to why you're interested in consulting and the firm and why you would be a good fit. Here's an example. Walk me through your resume. I'm a marketing and strategy professional with over five years of experience in media and e-commerce. I spent the last two years working at Activision Blizzard, where I led social media marketing. I planned and executed marketing campaigns that led to over $1 million in sales. I also developed a marketing strategy that lowered customer acquisition costs by 15%. Before that, I spent three years working at LinkedIn in their ads team. I ran customer surveys and focus groups to identify key customer pain points for ad purchasers. From this, I launched over 50 tailored email campaigns that had a 25% higher conversion rate than previous campaigns. Given my experience in data-driven marketing and strategy, I believe I would be an excellent fit for McKinsey's marketing and sales practice. Question number two, why consulting? Consulting is a tough job and many consultants quit even before reaching their one year mark. It is a huge waste of resources for a consulting firm to hire and train someone only for them to leave after six months or so. The why consulting interview question assesses your interest and passion for consulting. This question checks if you have a basic understanding of the job. The better you understand what consulting is, the more likely you are to stay at the firm for a longer period of time because there will be no surprises to you once you start working. Secondly, this question checks for enthusiasm, which signals to the interviewer that you would work hard as a consultant. To answer this question, identify three compelling reasons why you are interested in consulting and use the following simple but effective structure to make your answer clear and organized. State that consulting is your top career choice, provide three reasons to support this, and reiterate that consulting best fits your professional needs and goals. Here's an example. Why are you interested in consulting? Consulting is currently my top career choice for the following three reasons. One, I want to make a significant impact by working with executives at billion dollar companies on their most challenging business problems. The opportunity to make such a big difference is what excites me and gets me out of bed. Two, I am passionate about the energy sector through my previous work experience at ExxonMobil. Through consulting, I can further develop my expertise in energy and also develop the soft and hard skills to make me a successful business executive. Three, I enjoy working closely with teams, especially with bright and extraordinary people. I look forward to getting to know my colleagues closer and developing friendships with them. At this point, I feel that no other career better suits my professional needs and goals than consulting. Question number three, why this firm? Interviewers will often ask you why you are interested in working at their particular firm. This consulting interview question is used to assess whether you are genuinely interested in the company. Before extending job offers, consulting firms want to confirm that you are actually interested in the firm and have a decent likelihood of accepting their job offer if they gave you one. 
it is a huge waste of resources for a firm to interview and give offers to candidates who are applying to the firm as a backup choice with no real intent to accept a job offer. Therefore, in answering this question, you need to demonstrate why the consulting firm you are interviewing for is a top choice for you. You need to convince interviewers of this. Identify three compelling reasons why you are interested in the consulting firm and organize your answers using the following structure. State that the firm is your top choice consulting firm, provide three reasons to support this, and reiterate that the firm best fits your professional needs and goals. For example, why are you interested in McKinsey? McKinsey is my top choice consulting firm to work for. There are three reasons why. One, I'm passionate about the government and education sector. McKinsey is the clear leader in these sectors among all consulting firms. McKinsey has tremendous expertise and strong client relationships that I would love to learn from. Two, McKinsey has a global staffing model, which gives me the opportunity to travel and work with different people around the world. I get fulfillment from working with smart, diverse teams, and McKinsey is the best place for this. Three, many of my mentors that I respect and look up to have worked at McKinsey. They have all highly recommended working at McKinsey, so I know that McKinsey would be the best place to work to develop my skills and advance my career. Given these reasons, I feel that no other consulting firm besides McKinsey best fits my professional needs and goals. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please take a second to give this video a like. Also, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our new consulting interview content. These two actions help support our channel so that we can make more free videos for you. Question number four, give an example of a time when you led a team. Behavioral or fit interview questions are commonly asked consulting interview questions. They ask you to draw upon a time or experience in the past in which you demonstrated a particular trait or quality. These questions dive deeper beyond what is listed on your resume. The most common type of consulting behavioral interview question focuses on leadership. An example of this type of question includes, give an example of a time when you led a team. To answer this question, pick an experience in which you made a meaningful and significant impact while working with or managing other people. Number one, provide context of the situation and what the objective or goal was. Number two, describe the leadership role you took and what actions you took. Number three, explain the impact and results of these actions. And number four, summarize what this experience taught you about leadership or what the situation reveals about you as a leader. Here's an example. Give an example of a time when you led a team. While working on a customer service improvement project for Amazon, I led a four-person analytics team. The goal was to analyze recent customer survey data to identify ways to improve customer service. I distributed work according to each person's interests and expertise. After a few weeks, I observed that three members worked productively and efficiently, while one member, John, was consistently delivering work that was both low quality and late. Realizing that this was a potential motivation issue, I sat down with John to understand what the root cause was. The problem was that the analytics team had recently shifted to using an analytics software called Tableau. John found Tableau difficult to set up and use, so he was unmotivated to switch from using Excel, which he was an expert at. As a result, Excel could not handle the millions of rows of data causing poor work quality and delays. To motivate John, I set up three one-on-one -on -one Tableau training sessions with him to walk him through the setup of Tableau. I demonstrated how it could save him time because it performed computationally intensive calculations much quicker than Excel. Afterward, John began liking Tableau. He became excited to learn about what other features of Tableau could save him time in his other projects. His performance significantly improved and he began consistently delivering high quality work on time. Our team generated over 20 different customer initiatives that would increase customer satisfaction scores by 20% and generate $125 million in additional revenue each year. This leadership experience taught me how important it is to understand your teammates. John did not have a motivational issue, but a transitioning issue. If I did not take the time to understand how John was really feeling, I would have overlooked a simple solution to this problem. Question number five. Tell me about a time when you solved a difficult problem. Another type of behavioral consulting interview question focuses on problem solving. An example of this type of question includes, tell me about a time when you solved a difficult problem. To answer this question, pick an experience in which you faced a difficult problem or situation, but were still able to make a meaningful and significant impact. 
Number one, provide context of the situation and what the problem was. Number two, describe what actions you took to solve the problem. Number three, explain the impact and results of these actions on the problem. And number four, summarize what this experience taught you about problem solving or what this situation reveals about you as a problem solver. Question number six, describe a situation when you disagreed with someone. A third type of behavioral consulting interview question focuses on resolving conflict. An example of this type of question includes, give an example of a time when you disagreed with your manager. To answer this question, pick an experience in which you faced conflict but still made a meaningful and significant impact. Number one, provide context of the situation and what the conflict was. Number two, describe what actions you took to resolve the conflict. Number three, explain the impact and results of resolving the conflict. And number four, summarize what this experience taught you about working with other people or what this situation reveals about you as a teammate. Question number seven, tell me about a time when you failed. The final type of behavioral consulting interview question focuses on resilience when facing failure. An example of this type of question includes, give an example of a time when you tried to accomplish something but failed. To answer this question, pick an experience in which you faced a major obstacle or setback, but overcame it to deliver a meaningful and significant impact. Number one, provide context of the situation and what major obstacle or setback you faced. Number two, describe how you reacted to the obstacle or setback and what actions you took in response. Number three, explain the impact and results of moving past the obstacle or setback. And number four, summarize what this experience taught you about resilience or what this situation reveals about your motivation, adaptability, or optimism. Question number eight, what's your greatest weakness? To answer this question, it is best to structure your answer. Provide a one sentence high level summary of a weakness, then illustrate that weakness with an example. Afterwards, explain the specific steps you took to work on and improve this weakness. Finally, describe the tangible outcomes as a result of your involvement. You should pick a weakness that will not raise a red flag to the interviewer. It needs to be a real weakness, not a strength in disguise. Trying to mask a strength as a weakness will signal to the interviewer that you aren't reflective enough to identify your own weaknesses. Examples of great weaknesses you could talk about include focusing too much on details and not enough on the big picture, difficulty presenting effectively in front of large groups, trouble tackling ambiguous or unclear problems, slow decision making when it comes to handling important or big problems, trouble delegating work to others effectively, trouble exhibiting confidence in front of others, or difficulty staying organized when given too many tasks or assignments. Question number nine, how can we improve profitability? Among case interviews, profitability cases are the most common consulting interview question. Profitability cases ask you to determine how to improve a company's profitability. There are two steps to solving a profitability case. First, you need to understand quantitatively what is the driver causing the decline in profits. Since profit is revenues minus costs, you need to determine whether revenues have gone down, costs have gone up, or both. You'll then need to dive deeper to understand exactly what revenue or cost driver is responsible. For example, on the revenue side, is the decline due to a decline in quantity sold or a decrease in price? Within quantity sold, is the decline concentrated in a particular product line, geography, or customer segment? You'll need to dive deeper into costs as well, breaking it down into variable costs and fixed costs. The second step is to identify qualitatively what factors are driving the decline in profitability that you identified in the previous step. To do this, you'll likely need to look at customers, competitors, and the overall market. Looking at customers, have customer needs or preferences changed? Have their purchasing habits or behaviors changed? Or have their perceptions of the company changed? Looking at competitors, have new players entered the market? Have existing competitors made any recent strategic moves? Or are competitors also experiencing a decline in profitability? And looking at the market, are there any market trends that we should be aware of? For example, are there new technology or regulatory changes? How do these trends impact profitability? Question number 10, should we enter this new market? Among case interviews, market entry cases are the second most common consulting interview question. Market entry cases ask you to determine whether a company should enter a new market. 
Typically, to recommend entering a new market, there are four things that would ideally be true. The market is attractive, competition is weak, the company has the capabilities to enter the market, and the company would be profitable from entering the market. In other words, you need to determine if the market is attractive enough to be worth entering. If the market is attractive, how competitive would it be to enter? If the market is attractive and easy to enter, does the company actually have the capabilities required to enter the market successfully? Finally, if the company does enter the market, will they be profitable? Question 11. Should we acquire this company? Merger and acquisition case interviews are another common type of consulting interview question. Merger and acquisition cases ask you to determine whether a company or private equity firm should acquire another company. In the case of a company looking to acquire another company, the reason for the acquisition is usually to access a new market, access new customers, or to grow revenues and profits. In the case of a private equity firm looking to acquire a company, the reason for the acquisition is usually to grow the acquired company and then sell the company years later for a high return on investment. In either case, four things typically need to be true to recommend making an acquisition. The market that the acquisition target is in is attractive. The acquisition target is an attractive company. The acquisition would generate meaningful synergies. And the acquisition makes sense financially. Question 12. How should we price our product? Pricing case interviews are another common type of consulting interview question. Pricing cases ask you to determine how to price a particular product or service. To solve pricing case interviews, you should be familiar with the three different pricing strategies. Pricing based on costs. Set a price based on what the costs are of producing the product or delivering the service. Pricing based on competition. Set a price based on the prices that competitors are charging for similar products and services. And finally, pricing based on value added. Set a price based on the benefits the product or service provides customers and how much they would be willing to pay for the benefits. You'll likely need to use all three pricing strategies to help you determine the optimal price. Pricing based on costs determines the minimum price you should set to make sure that you are not losing money. Pricing based on value determines the maximum price you could set and still have customers that are willing to purchase your product or service. And pricing based on competition will help you determine which price in between the previous two price points you should set. Question 13. Should we launch this new product? New product case interviews are another common type of consulting interview question. New product cases ask you to determine whether a company should create and launch a new product. These types of cases are similar to new market entry cases. To recommend creating and launching a new product, four things generally need to be true. The product's market is attractive. The product meets customers' needs and is better than competitors' products. The company has the capabilities to create and launch the product. And finally, the company will be profitable. Question 14, market sizing questions. Market sizing questions are another common type of consulting interview question that may be asked as part of any case interview. Market sizing questions ask you to estimate the size of a particular market. Market size is typically defined as the total sales of a product or service in one year in a specified geography. There are two different approaches to answer market sizing questions. Top-down approach. Start with a large number and then refine and break down the number until you get your answer. Bottom-up approach. Start with a small number and then build up and increase the number until you get your answer. To answer market sizing questions, decide which approach you want to take, outline the steps you would take to calculate the market size, and then walk the interviewer through your assumptions and calculations. For example, what is the size of the contact lenses market in the United States? Using a top-down approach, we can answer this question by taking the following steps. Start with the population of the United States, segment the population by age, estimate the percentage of people in each age group with vision problems, Estimate the percentage of people that wear contact lenses. Estimate the number of pairs of contact lenses each person wears per year. And estimate the price per contact lens. Then, we just need to multiply all of these figures to calculate the market size. Starting with the US population, assume there are 320 million people. Assume that life expectancy is 80 years and there is a uniform distribution of ages. 
Let's segment the population into four age groups, 0 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, and 61 to 80. There are 80 million people in each age group. Let's assume that 20% of people in the first age group have vision problems, 30% in the second group, 50% in the third group, and 50% in the fourth group. This gives us 16 million people in the first age group, 24 million in the second, 40 million in the third, and 40 million in the fourth group. This gives us a total of 120 million people that have vision problems. Assume that a third of people wear contact lenses versus wear glasses. So this means that 40 million people wear contact lenses. If each person uses two pairs of contact lenses a month, that is 24 pairs of contact lenses a year. Multiplying 40 million people with 24 pairs of contact lenses gives us 960 million pairs of contact lenses used every year. If a pair of contact lenses costs $5 on average, then the market size of contact lenses is 960 million pairs times $5, which is $4.8 billion. Question 15. Do you have any questions? The final common consulting interview question is, do you have any questions for me? Almost all consulting interviewers will try to leave time at the end of the interview for you to ask questions. Asking meaningful questions to the interviewer is a great opportunity to connect with the interviewer on a more personal level. Additionally, it is another opportunity to show how interested you are in consulting and in the firm that you are interviewing for. If you ask the right questions, you can leave the interviewer with a positive and memorable last impression. If you ask the wrong questions, you can leave the interviewer with a negative last impression or they may forget who you are by the end of the day. Therefore, carefully prepare what questions you'd like to ask at the end of the interview. Here are a few examples of great questions you can ask. What was the most challenging case that you worked on? What has been your favorite case so far? What do you enjoy the most and the least about your job? Looking back at your first year in consulting, what would you have done differently? What are attributes or qualities of the most successful consultants? What advice would you give an incoming consultant? What do you see as the biggest opportunities or challenges for the company? And how do the core values of the firm impact how the firm's employees work with each other and clients? And with that, you now know the 15 most common consulting interview questions and exactly how to answer each. Comment below which question you have the most difficulty answering and we'll try to create more free content on it. Last important message for you. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step shortcut to learn case interviews quickly, check out our comprehensive case interview course and books. Links are in the video description. We teach the most robust, effective case interview strategies in the least time-consuming way to save you hundreds of hours of prep time and help you land multiple consulting job offers.